Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 29th, 2022. Chag Sameach. Today is Yom Yerushalayim, the 28th day of Iyar, the day that we celebrate Yerushalayim, Jerusalem being reunified in 1967. On the 28th of Iyar, 5727, which corresponds to June 7th, 1967, the famous words of General Mati Gur were heard across Israel on the radio. Hakotel Harhabayit Biadenu. The Harabayit, the mount on which the Besamigdash used to stand, Biadenu is in our control. It's in our hands. And that was followed on the radio by the singing of Tehillim, Mizmar 122. And by Naomi Shemer's famous song, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, Jerusalem of Gold. Now, Tehillim 122 has become and is logically an anthem of Jerusalem. It refers to Yerushalayim as Yerushalayim Habnuya, the built Jerusalem, or perhaps the rebuilt Jerusalem, Ki'ir Shechurbul which is the city that has been joined together with the understanding in 1967 that once again, after 19 years of separation, Jerusalem is joined together east and west. Ki'ir Shechurbul and that Mizmar, that paragraph in Tehillim, Psalm number 122, so well captured that moment expressed originally by King David, David HaMelech, in Tehillim. And Yerushalayim Shel Zahav. Yerushalayim Shel Zahav had been composed by Naomi Shemer just a few weeks earlier. It was composed in honor of the 1967 Israel Song Festival. And at the mayor of Jerusalem at that time, Teddy Kalek, had asked that the songs that were going to be played in on Yom Hatz Ma'ut 1967 should be related to Yerushalayim, should have the theme of Jerusalem. And so Naomi Shemer wrote this song for that occasion, and it was heard for the first time, sung by Shuli Natan, and immediately when it was sung on that Yom Ma'ut, it was a success. It touched the hearts of so many people. And it was only a few days after that that the army began mobilizing its reserves in preparation for what would be the Six-Day War, and that song, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, served to encourage and strengthen the resolve and the hearts of soldiers and citizens throughout Israel and Jews around the world. And less than three weeks later, the Six-Day War broke out, broke out on Monday, June 5th, 1967, and the old city of Yerushalayim was regained and recaptured by the IDF, the Israel Defense Force, on June 7th, the 28th of Iyar. And as soon as that happened, during the liberation of the city, soldiers burst out singing this beautiful song, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, Jerusalem of Gold. And they sang it at the Kotel, and they sang it throughout Israel. That song has a really interesting backstory. So the phrase, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, Jerusalem of Gold, that phrase appears in the Talmud over two, about 2,000 years, from about 2,000 years ago. And it was an object that was referred to a number of times in the Talmud. It was a piece of jewelry. Yerushalayim Shel Zahav was a piece of gold jewelry that was designed like a picture of Jerusalem. It might have been worn as a pin 
by noble women. It might have been worn as a tiara. That part is not exactly clear, but it was a known piece of jewelry. And the, the, the place where it comes up in the Talmud is in the midst of a rather technical discussion in the laws of Shabbos. On Shabbos, we're not allowed to carry any object outside in a public domain. Of course, that's why we have an Eruv to allow carrying certain objects outside on Shabbos. But outside of an Eruv, we're not allowed to carry objects. And the question was, is uh, this piece of jewelry, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, was it permitted to wear that outside on Shabbos if you're not inside an Eruv? Is it considered carrying or not? And the technical issue was, it's a piece of jewelry. And the question in the, in the Talmud is, is it the kind of thing that if a woman was wearing this beautiful piece of jewelry representing Jerusalem, would she be likely, if she saw her friend on the street, to take it off to show to her friend, maybe forgetting today is Shabbos and inadvertently coming to carry on Shabbos. So that's a dispute in the Talmud, whether it's permissible to wear it on Shabbos. But the mention of Yerushalayim Shel Zahav that moved Naomi Shemer to compose her song is from a different passage, also in the Talmud, also a very famous passage. The Talmud says the story of the, the engagement and the marriage of Rabbi Akiva to his wife. The Talmud says that the daughter of Kalba Shavua, Kalba Shavua was a very wealthy man in Jerusalem, and his daughter saw, at that time he was known as Akiva, Akiva was a shepherd who worked for her father. And she saw in him greatness, although it was not apparent at that time. Number one, he was poor. Number two, he was unlearned. And, um, but she saw in him greatness. And she said to him, if the two of us were to marry, would you agree to go away for a while to study Torah, to become the kind of great scholar that I know is, is within you? Something that no one else saw. And he said yes. And so secretly, they became engaged to each other, and secretly, they married each other. Well, as soon as her father heard, out of, heard about this, he threw her out of his house and he made a vow that she could not take any benefit from any of his possessions, any of his wealth. And it turned out that she and her new husband, Akiva, were living in poverty. They not only did not have a bed, they didn't have a blanket, they slept on straw. And one night early in their marriage, when they awoke in the morning and Akiva turned to his beautiful bride and he saw that she had straw in her hair and he said to her, just wait one day, instead of straw in your hair, you will have, I will give you Yerushalayim Shel Zahav a golden tiara representing Jerusalem in your hair. She said to him, I want you to go to study Torah. The Talmud says that Rabbi Kiva went away to study in Yeshiva to study Torah for 12 years. He did not return home. And at the end of 12 years, he returned home. But before he reached his home, he overheard a conversation before anyone recognized that he was on his way home. He overheard a conversation, a conversation that some man was having with his wife. And this man was saying to his wife, you know, your father was right what he did to kick you out of his house. He was right to cause you to live in poverty. 
What kind of a husband do you have? He leaves you for 12 years. You're living in poverty. You have nothing. Your father was right. And Rachel, his wife, not knowing that he was actually, Akiva was actually close by, Rachel said to this man, I am so proud of my husband. I am so proud of the person that he is becoming. If he would ask me if he could go back to study for another 12 years, I would readily grant him that permission. And Akiva heard that. And he turned around without even coming into the house. And he left to study Torah for another 12 years. At the end of the second 12 years. So he's now been away studying for 24 years. Akiva now returns home, but now he does not return alone. Now he returns home, says the Talmud, and pay attention to this phrase because from what we've discussed previously, it should be very meaningful to us. Now Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, the famous Rabbi Akiva returns home with 24,000 students. The greatest scholar of Israel, the greatest teacher of Israel. And he returns home, not alone, but surrounded by his students, having gained the luster and the prestige of being the greatest scholar of Israel. And as he returns home, a great crowd comes from his hometown to greet him. And of course, his wife wants to greet him, but in the crowd she's pushed to the side. And in the distance, Rabbi Akiva sees this, and he tells them, let her come forward. And he says in front of all of his students and all of the people of the town, he says the famous words, Sheli v'shelchem shelahi. Everything that I accomplished and everything that you accomplished It's only because of her. It's only because of my wife. It's only because of her selflessness. And it's only because she believed in me at a time when no one else would have believed in me. Probably I didn't believe in myself. But she saw something in me and whatever I have become and through me whatever you have become, it's all because of her. Shali v'shalchem shalahi. And ultimately he gave her Yerushalayim shel zahav a golden tiara of Jerusalem. Now, please remember what we discussed earlier about Rabbi Akiva, that no matter how challenging the circumstances he faced, Rabbi Akiva found a way to frame what he saw with hope and optimism. A few weeks ago, we discussed this characteristic of Rabbi Akiva And we discussed this on a national historical level. And today we see this characteristic of Rabbi Akiva on a personal level earlier in his life. At the darkest moment, when our goal seems impossible, we can choose to see the promise of redemption, the promise of rebirth, individually, as well as nationally. Rabbi Akiva merited seeing his personal situation transform through his wife's insistence on his immersion in Torah learning. And eventually, he did give her Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, a golden piece of jewelry, Jerusalem of gold. And we are able to see today the vindication and the fulfillment of Rabbi Akiva's prediction of normal life reestablished in Jerusalem. In our day, we see it. And Naomi Shemer, in 1967, composing at a moment of fear and apprehension as dark clouds were gathering against Israel, she was able to see as our enemies were gathering against us. She was able to see and express the beauty and strength of a reunified and rebuilt Jerusalem that came to pass just days after she composed this magnificent song. 
today on Yom Yerushalayim, we remember and we celebrate David Amela, King David, and Rabbi Akiva, and Naomi Shemer for their prophetic insight into the eternal truth of Jerusalem and for giving us, each in their own way, the vocabulary to celebrate today the miracle of Jerusalem. My friends, Chag Sameach, have a wonderful day and a very happy Yom Yerushalayim. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.